fellow fantasy sports fans. I am your host, Joe Booz Ram on MFSN's The Hub. Tonight, we have a fabulous guest, Chuki Wakori, with one of the great defensive linemen all-time uh, fumble runbacks. He ran twice as fast as I have ever run. Sitting nowhere near me is Vlad to the bone, and as always, Ross the boss. Hi, I'm Ross the boss, and I want to talk sports with you, cowboy. I just, I love it. I love when you do that. It makes me wonder, are you, am I the cowboy? Who is a cowboy? The cowboy is anybody that listens to our show. I should say cowboy and cowgirl, oh, but I don't. But what qualifies as a cowboy? Yeah, a cowboy is somebody that loves sports, that loves to get the inside scoop. And a cowboy is kind of, it's kind of a trailblazer. You know what I mean? A cowboy is somebody that loves to get information. And that's what we're here for. Right, guys? I love Absolutely. it. So, okay. Speaking of cowboys... I want to look at how to assess value on first and 10. It's early in the season. How do we assess value? Uh, you know, value changes every week. So I want to hear from you guys about how do you assess who's actually good? I think the important thing early in the season is not to overreact to a one week sample. I, if you spend a, a high pick on somebody, take Saquon Barkley, for example, who was terrible last week. Um, you don't overreact and assume he's going to be a bust. But what you're doing, what you're looking for is players who appear to be more in the game plan for a team than maybe you thought of before, that you thought they were going to be before the season. If somebody is is had a great week one, but it was a touchdown dependent week, maybe you don't uh, react as strongly to them. But somebody who got a lot more touches or a lot more looks at wide receiver or tight end than you thought, then you start to say, hey, maybe this guy has more value than we thought. Yeah, well, what do you do with a guy like Peyton Barber? He got 17 handoffs and he ran for 29 yards. Well, how do we read that? Well, I mean, Peyton Barber plays for the Washington team, whatever their name is. <laughs> the um, Washington team. But, but I mean, you're, he's somebody that you got to pick up. You got to respect the handoffs. Seventeen's a lot, and unless they have somebody else in their back pocket, you know, we'll see. Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson, exactly. We'll see. But it's a, it's not a bad pickup. Um, but the thing you got to worry about is this, and you can take advantage of it. People press the panic button. I seen it happen, panic button, and they, they end up dropping some of these players that were picked in the fifth or sixth round. They'll drop them and try to pick up somebody else, like the like the Browns, from, you know, Malcolm Brown from the Rams or somebody like that. They'll pick up and they'll drop somebody that they drafted, and that person they dropped just had a bad game. You come in, pick the person up, grab them, right, and then you guys are set, and you you have a player that's a fifth or sixth round pick that you got on the waiver wire. And that player is yep. going to perform. That player will and, perform and you'll be a winner. I guarantee it. Not, not only that, you, you don't want to panic, but you also want to recognize this, this is a mental game as much as anything else. So, you know, people will start talking about your players badly. Don't, you can't let them in. Uh, I got swayed about Adrian Peterson on this very show. I said, oh, the, oh, the old man. And, and you were like, ah, oh, he's waiver wire fodder. And, and then I heard somebody else was trashing him. And then he got cut by Washington. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll cut him. And now he's on the Lions. He's starting running back exactly as I expected. So you, you, got, you got to figure out how, how to trust your own, your own instincts and not, not overreact. You got to remember who you were a week ago. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just change all the time. So how about wide receivers? To me, wide receivers are harder to to predict than running backs R running backs, They're just handing the ball directly to them. Wide receiver. If you're not watching the game, you may not be able to assess it. One of the things that makes football tough is it's so it's such a team sport. And, and so the context of the team is really important. So when you're talking about a wide receiver, you have to worry about whether the offensive line is good enough to provide pass protection for the quarterback, whether the quarterback is good enough to make the, the reads and the passes necessary to make that wide receiver valuable. Look at Odell Beckham. Um, he hasn't, he's having a better game, I think, this week. But prior to this, he's been kind of really bad for fantasy owners for the last year. Um, and that's you know, you know why. You hold on. You know why it's bad? Because Baker Mayfield, he's so overrated. He exactly. Has, that makes my point. He has more point. commercials but, than he oh has my God. If, he, if, he's, he's, if he's overrated, he he's benched. really bad. 
They should bench him um, right now. Bring in Brian Sykes. You, know you know why Odell Beckham is performing well for one reason alone? It's because I am playing against the manager who owns Odell Beckham. Of course. We all know is. this is what happens. I mean, does that happen to you guys? Every time. Do they time have Justin yes. Verlander on their team? Yeah, always. Okay, guys, listen. I want to bring in our resident uh, fantasy pros expert, Andrew Seifter, to weigh in on how you assess the best players early in the season. He's a master of it. By the end of the year, he's always got the best team. Andrew, Andrew don't let us down. Don't let us down. Please have a take <laughs> that I agree with. Please, I, go. I, 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 I'll do I my need best. your help. Andrew, please, let's do I'll it. I'll do my best for you there. Um, but don't yeah, give no, away it's too a long, many secrets. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's a long process building a fantasy championship team, and it starts in week one. Uh, you, you have to just keep amassing value uh, and building your value over and over. Every, every spot on that bench matters, and you got to f- take full advantage of it. And I think you guys made uh, some good points about not uh, overreacting to re- week one, but I do also want to speak to the importance of not underreacting to week one because, you know, my first experience I remember as a fantasy football uh, owner was – back in the uh, first year that Kurt Warner ever uh, showed up on, in the oh, NFL. Yes. And uh, the week one, he went bananas. He threw for 350 yards and three touchdowns or something like that. And I said to myself, who's this guy? He, he, didn't, he wasn't even playing in he, the he's NFL. Bagging, you know? bagging groceries. Yeah, yeah exactly. Grocery, bagging I was like, groceries. I was like, and he married a woman twice his age. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I was like, that's a fluke. I didn't pick him up. Somebody else in my league picked him up. They didn't even have to you know, uh, use a high waiver claim or anything to get him. And they went on to win the league because of it, you know? So I think uh, value changes really fast in football. So um, I think you have to, you have to realize what makes and, and doesn't make value. And I think Casey kind of uh, alluded to it at the beginning of the conversation. It's what kind of a role uh, does a player have on their team? Are they, uh, you know, is it a team that scores a lot of points? Is it a, p- a player that's going to get a lot of touches? You know, because you can have one big play. Uh, even the Jets get a long touchdown pass occasionally, you know, but that doesn't mean anything. It's, you need to look at what are the positions, what what are the roles that you can play that's going to provide a lot of value in the long term? And then it's about uh, being one step ahead of the other people in your league. You've got to, uh, because, you know, once it's obvious a player's great, everyone's going to be putting in huge bids on them. So you have to be one step ahead of the game. You have to look at who's a player that needs just one thing to change or they, they took one step last week and next week they're going to take that next step and really uh, become a star. And, and you have to be constantly looking out for those sort of things. And, and you know what? You know what? Ross the boss agrees with you. But also you got to remember every year there's that one player that's not drafted or if he is, it's late rounds that ends up being your – savior and wins you the league last year lamar jackson the year before patrick mahomes who's it this year ross the boss says joe burrow how about that <laughs> so it's yeah, dangle joe that burrow <laughs> he's gonna win so, you the league maybe i hope so and, Andrew, but what i'm trying to say is your there, 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 there is that there is that diamond in the rough there is the lamar jackson that's probably still out there in the waiver wire it's you as the manager that has to do the homework has to do your job well, and has to watch our show to find out who that that's person right. True. is. And you know, you a lot of the people the that had, you know, a lot of the people that had Lamar Jackson last season, they didn't draft him to be their starter. Uh, they had somebody else. Right. And so I think it's a good strategy to actually sometimes have that, you know, safe guy at the beginning of the year. And, but then on the, on your bench, you want that guy who might, you might be cutting him in a week or two, but he has the upside to win the league if things break the right way. And I think Lamar Jackson was one of those players last season. Uh, we obviously see a lot of running backs that are like that, you know, they're one injury away uh, from being yeah. studs, you know? So those are valuable and, players to have. On yeah. Your this, bench. Is, this is why, this is why I own Peyton Barber. I feel like I'm I'm piling on him, but I actually do own him, and I need him to do well. So Peyton, come on, do, we'll, do this for me. Listen, we'll see. Oh, go ahead. We'll we'll, we'll no, see with you, Peyton Barber. I I again, 17 carries is a lot for a running back, and I would pick him up yeah. too. It's it's not a bad well, pickup. And this I, is the other thing. I want to say one thing about uh, and look, this is my understanding of it, which maybe it's not good. You guys can let me know. But I think early in the season, coaches rely on the veterans. It's the rookies grow with time that always happens at the end of the year those rookie wide receivers they're basically worthless at the beginning but then they become beasts so again, well, i I, I agree quit. and yeah. i don't agree and andrew i want to get your take i think running backs is a is a game of youth i think running backs except some exceptions oh sure there's elliot there's a few guys that are exceptions but 
I think it's a it's a it's a young man's game for running back. I love taking young guys under twenty five. That, that I yeah. kind of keep that I mean, rule. All right. But the, I, and and know, the I other like the thing guy. is the other thing is quarterback. There there are some stud quarterbacks like I mentioned. You know, there's the Joe Burrow. You you got Haber. You got Haber Herbert for the, for the Chargers who isn't playing yet, but he is going to get his. He is going to play. Yeah. And, and Tua, if they keep, Tua keep remember I mentioned him Tua, on the waiver wire. I, Tua I love too. There's guys that are going to be playing that are not playing right now, and you got to go right, out there right. and get them. All right, you got save your breath, Ross, because <laughs> we all know we all know that when you get going, you got to let out some steam. Uh, Ross is going to do Ross's rant. Nobody knows what he's going to say, least of all him. Ross. You have one minute and eight seconds. Go. Hi, I'm Ross the Boss, and I want to talk to you about quarterbacks and what's going on in the league. The, the, the standard quarterback that just sits in the pocket, that's over with. That's gone. Bye-bye. You know what's going on now? We had five quarterbacks that led their team in rushing last week. You know, you know what the record was when the five quarterbacks led their team in rushing? Five and oh. We had Russell Wilson. We had, we had uh, Lamar Jackson. We also had this kid named Josh Allen from Buffalo. You know, it, you know, you you the game has changed. The Tom Brady style, the Drew Brees style, the, even the Dan Marino. I'm going way back. Um, that style is all gone. What we have now the Bart is Star style. Oh, I'm the, sorry, <laughs> the Bart Star style. Um, <laughs> the standard quarterback. It, it's not about that anymore. It's about the mobile quarterback. It's about about you going crazy and picking up one of these guys that can run as we were saying two for the Miami Dolphins. He hasn't been playing yet. But when he plays, he'll be running. Ky- Ky- Kyra Murray is unbelievable. Th- that guy's like a video game. I, he's he had like 90 yards rushing. He, he led his team. He won. They beat, they beat the 49ers. I mean, you got to get a quarterback that's going to be mobile. It's the future. It's the wave. And I'm Ross, the boss. And I love talking sports with you. <laughs> Welcome back to The Hub. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. Click the bell for notifications. Spread the word. Tell all your friends in your leagues. Of course, you'll be giving them an advantage, but you watch it more and you'll be better. Now we're moving on to Take Your Pick, where we look at week one games and we talk about what's going to happen in uh, the week two games. So, guys, what did you notice from week one? Well, what I noticed week one is of a lot of the favorites won there were, there were a few upsets, like Arizona. A few of the upsets did happen, but a lot of the teams that should have won, won. Uh, there were some great close games. My Bengals lost, but long story short, um, I thought it was a good. It was a, I thought it was a good week, considering there's no preseason, and we had no idea who was going to get the ball, who's who was going to do well, who wasn't going to do well, who's going to be surprises. You kind of learned that during preseason. This year we didn't have that, but. You Ross, know, I, tell us what tell us what you think about your Browns pick to, to beat the Ravens. <laughs> I had to bring it up. I had to bring it up. The Browns almost come on. What say t- you? They, they almost scored a touchdown. They looked they look great. <laughs> no, we did score a touchdown. We almost I, I, got I an know, extra point. I know, point. I know. You missed, you missed the extra point. <laughs> but what I'm saying is this: I I always try to pick some upsets. That that wasn't a great pick, but um, I'll have some great picks coming up on this segment. I, I want to know what you guys think about Washington beating. Philadelphia the way they did one of the big stories as I saw it what was and as I read about it is Ron Rivera's uh fourth down call that completely changed the game I don't even know if you guys were watching that or if you're aware of that I'm outing you if you're not you you outed no, me you I clearly wasn't watching, watching the game this is the kind of thing that drives me crazy as a Browns fan so Washington hires Ron Rivera he's this veteran coach he knows what he's doing and what he said about that call is I had to show my team I believed in them and they got it done. Now, the problem is when the Browns coaches say they believe in them, they don't get it done. Or maybe maybe they don't do that. I don't know. But that was big. Then, then you got a bunch of offensive lines that I think underperformed in surprising ways. Everybody was talking about Dallas and how great their offense is. And, you know, their offensive line, I think they have injuries. But I don't know. They underperformed. What are you guys thinking about that? I don't know if they underperformed. I mean, it was the first week of the season. We know they have legit weapons all over the field, and Dak Prescott could be, by the end of the year, one of the highest-scoring fantasy players in football this year. And and so, again, like we talked about before, 
does one, you know, does one week show a trend? I think if we see another down week from them, then maybe we start to question them. But what I took from last week was the quarterback's rushing touchdown barrage between Cam Newton and Josh Allen, uh, that there's that running backs aren't getting as many goal line carries as they used to in some of these programs with all of these running backs by committees. Sometimes the quarterbacks just take it by themselves and they're going to get a lot of points that way. Yeah, I feel like running backs are on a downward swing because people are people are passing more, wide receivers are, are getting more of the yards, and now quarterbacks are stealing their their goal line their goal line calls. So you know, Peyton Barber. Well, I I, I think that the, yards the, is good. The the Dallas game, there was a horrible call that they did not they did not they did not call the pass interference. That 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 right. hurt them a lot, and we know that it was it was it was a horrible call by the ref to not call pass interference. It was blatantly a pass interference call. Um, I, I don't know why he didn't call it. I think he was scared because it was the Rams were at home uh, playing in front of no fans. I don't know why the ref would yeah, care. They were you like, don't. I mean? The fan, the cardboard um, fans will attack us. But but you're right. As I said in my rant, they, these quarterbacks are running the ball more. It, you know, you, 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 you watch these games now. The quarterbacks don't mind running. And the quarterbacks who aren't running – you know, they're, they're, you know, it, it, they, they, they're not getting the points like the other guys are getting. I mean, it's a huge advantage right. you have getting these mobile quarterbacks. You know what? I got to bring on fantasy pros expert, Andrew Seifer. He was chomping at the bit to get in here. I saw him. <laughs> so come on in, come on in, Andrew. So listen, I'm in. we're all going to, um, we're going to, this was an idea Casey gave me. So this is your fault, buddy. Uh, okay. We're all going to make picks for, our fantasy performer of the week. And, and by that, I mean the one that's going to be the difference maker. So, uh, Andrew, we're going to start yeah. with you. Who's your, diff- right. who's your difference maker? All right. Well, so I actually write a column. Please don't uh, take mine. What? Well, I might be because I'm going to take I someone you just mentioned. Two. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, yeah. So I, so I write a column for fantasy pros. It's called uh, Overvalued and Undervalued. So each week I look at a quarterback a uh, running back, a tight end, and a wide receiver that I think is going to overperform uh, what most people in the fantasy industry are saying and one that's going to underperform. And uh, the one that I think is going to under or overperform uh, at quarterback this week is Cam Newton. And uh, the thing about Cam Newton is he used to be, you, you guys are talking about the running quarterbacks, and uh, Cam Newton used to always put up uh, you know top 10 quarterback fantasy numbers all the time uh, because of his running ability, especially at the goal line. And uh, the, the thing about Bill Belichick is he really, uh, the reason that they win so much is that they structure their offensive game plan around their talent instead of trying to get uh, their talent to fit uh, into an existing scheme. So they have totally rewritten what they're trying to do this year now that they have Cam instead of Tom Brady. And uh, last week, uh, Cam Newton uh, ran for 15 times for 75 yards and two touchdowns. And the thing about that is it wasn't some fluke. It wasn't him just scrambling around and making improvisational plays. That was by design. They had uh, seven runs that were designed runs for Cam. They had another six option plays where he kept the ball instead of handing to the running back. So that's 13 of his 15 uh, rushes right there were, were, were by design and planned. And I think that's something that's going to happen week after week. And uh, that, that gives Cam Newton a ton of value. That's the way that the Patriots uh, can try to stay in the game against a team like Seattle uh, that is just going to be able to put up all kinds of points. They're going to have to run their entire offense through Cam. And, and, and when, a quarterback, when a quarterback leads the team in rushing, they win, like, like I said before. Yeah. It's, 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 no, it's a it's common, the theme it's of the show, trend. it seems like. And Cam Newton is, is revitalized. I mean, he, the league gave up on him. Now he's back. Yep, I've got him as my number six QB this week. My pick this week, I'm sure it will be a bust because that's how I roll. <laughs> but listen, I think Josh Allen is going to explode this week, and it's because he's got Miami. I, I, like, I love the matchup, and uh, if he was playing against my fantasy team, I would know for sure. Uh, I should have picked Odell Beckham. He's already exploding against my team. All right, but I'm going to go with Josh Allen. I've never, I never was high on him before. Now I am. So it's your chance to trade him as fast as you can. Okay. And it's Casey. He, he gets that bonus because he gets dismissed by people because it he makes it look ugly. But he he uh, you know gets yeah. the job done and he definitely gets it done for the fantasy owners. He does. I'm going with I'm going with Derrick Henry in Tennessee. I just think, uh, I mean, he's predicted to do really well this week, but he's going against Jacksonville. Uh, who yeah. I just think he's going to gash him. Like he could have one of those, uh, a fantasy pros expert I know tweeted about him earlier this week with regards to what his <laughs> high school, his high school numbers oh, who's were. That? 
And they were ridiculous, <laughs> Mr. Seifter. Uh, and, and he could put up video game numbers this week. He ran I just for, think he's going he's gonna to crush. I think he ran uh, for over 400 Jackson. yards four times that season. <laughs> yeah, but remember, he led the league in rushing last year. That's not really like a bold prediction. It's we didn't like, say a sleeper. We said who's going to overperform. Right, but he, he had some pretty big games the past few weeks. He, last time he played Jacksonville, he, has, he ran for 159 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. well, we're, yeah. well, what we're, what we're looking for yeah. in this, what we're looking for in I this, know. and we're going to keep track of this, is who's that biggest performer? So, Ross, you're, you're, you're on the hot seat now. I'm on the hot seat. So, as we yeah. know, this weekend it's opening night in Las Vegas for the Raiders. The Raiders. They're Who's going to jail? The, they're playing. The, they're, there's no one there. The, the whole, there's no fans the whole season. I had tickets for, tonight so the, for that some, game. Some, some cardboard cutout is going to jail. Going to jail. Some cardboard yeah. cutout is going to have stripes on his shirt. Go. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to be in the jail. I wanted to be the first guy to be in jail, but no. No fans. <laughs> so Ross the Boss is taking a Raider, which I never do. I'm not a Raider fan. But I think they'll. I think he'll play well. I'm taking Jacobs, the running back for the Raiders. I feel him 100 yards and two touchdowns. You heard it from Ross the Boss first. He's going to have a great game. The Saints' running defense is good, but I think the Raiders are going to be pumped up, and I feel they could upset the Saints. I feel it. All right. I, I think yeah. I think well, Breeze is going to have a it. tough game without Michael Thomas. Yeah. No Michael yeah. Thomas. Well, and, and you know that, what? That Drew, just means Drew Brees did not look great last week either. I mean, I know they played Tampa Bay, but his, if you look at his stats, I don't think he th- he did not throw for over 200 yards. So, you know, let's let's be real here. They had an interception for a touchdown. The Saints. I I think Drew's 40 years old. I think he's going like this. We'll see. I could be wrong. All right, <laughs> all right. Listen, we've got our four players. We're going to check in next week to see how we did. I could not feel worse about my pick because I never liked Josh Allen. I don't even know what I'm doing. But I love Josh I'm Allen. Stay with it. No, no, no we I love should. Him. We love him. I love the kid. This is what I'm saying. No, I think he's great. Wyoming. I've gotten wrong my entire career. So I just feel like I'm going to do it again. We'll see. Up next, it is time for Monster Madness. Eight heroes and villains are going to bite the dust. We find out who up next. It is time for a reckoning. It's time for Monster Madness. Okay, guys. Coming up, the 116 matchups and the 8-9 matchups. This happens all the time. The 116 matchups, people think, you know, not even worth talking about. But a 16 seed did win in the NCAA tournament not too long ago. Will it happen this time? Guys, we are going to start out in the West, where Neo faces off against Arya Stark, who vanquished... Sherlock Holmes, despite his cocaine binge. Lauren, we're going to start with you. Who you got between Neo and Arya Stark? And now, I feel it's silly to start with somebody who doesn't even know Game of Thrones. But here, do you know The Matrix? Let's hope you do. I, I know a little bit about The Matrix. Uh, you guys, right, you know, right, can good. help me out here. I'll, I'll take the first one, the 116. Um, between this matchup, I've got um, Neo. Um, mostly, you know, he's got, you know, these telekinetic, you know, abilities, you know, we've seen him bend a spoon with his mind. We've seen him, you know, stop bullets with his mind, which is pretty impressive. Um, he's pretty good at the Kung Fu. Um, and he can clone he himself. Quickly. Yeah, he did. I know Kung um, Fu. I know Kung <laughs> Fu. Um, and I mean, I do have limited knowledge about Arya Stark, but, um, my takeaway is that she's pretty good with the sword, right? I know she has like some noble characteristics, but that's her main yep. Yep. shtick, right? So I kind of think like, you know, I I can see like Neo like staring at the sword, bending her sword. Listen, I mean, sure well, and her, her sword is called needle. It's like as small oh. as a spoon. I'm, I'm going to go to I Ross to... next because I, oh. oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, <laughs> well, I, you just don't know I, Arya Stark, so go ahead. I, I don't know Arya Stark, but are we fighting in the Matrix or are we fighting in the real world? Because all of a sudden, I don't think Neo's a one We are in fighting in the, We're fighting in the West Bracket. All right. Is the Stay West focused. Bracket located in the Matrix? You get to make the argument. Don't don't, don't ask me. You're 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 your own man. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be the one who goes with the upset. If she, if she's as badass as everybody said she was last week when we talked about it, like I don't wow. think you're fighting in the Matrix. If you're fighting wow, in the real world, who doesn't think, even know who she is. I think what? Arya Stark has a legit shot, especially if she's you good got, with the you sword. Got some balls. Like all right, Neo, Ross the boss. Neo followed the White Rabbit. That's all he knew how to do. That's, that's true. You, you Ross know, the boss, guys, who you got? You guys, you can't be serious. 
Neo by far the Matrix. All the all the crazy things Neo does with the telekinetics, to the uh, to the yeah. stopping bullets, to everything that 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 happens in the Matrix. It can't compare to Game of Thrones. It's night and day. But night once you day. plug Arya Stark uh, uh, into the Matrix, I'm, she can be badass too. No, she can't no. do anything. Uh, she's, you don't even know, Casey. She's right, like back but I don't. The, she's but like back in prehistoric days. She has no idea what a bullet is. She has no idea what's going on. Yeah, she lives, oh, she that's lives a great like, point. The, like, the, the, they, the anachronistic fighting. They, Listen, they don't even have Neo, fire. Neo, Neo got Neo got bored facing off against Agent Smith. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I love mean, Neo Stark, hands down. But... There's, it's un, it shouldn't be an argument. Neo's my. Bro. I'm just saying. All right. The luck. assumption it's, is that he has home field advantage, home court advantage. No I don't know. Court. Are we in the matrix? Oh, no. Okay. Listen, Neo already won three to one. We're going to move on to Superman as the number one seed in the Midwest. <laughs> Speaking of home field advantage, he is a Midwesterner, and he's facing off against Conan the Barbarian. I don't remember where Conan was from, but I think it was Eastern Europe somewhere. I mean, it did not look like the Midwest. Uh, uh, Superman is home field advantage. Meanwhile, he's Superman. Conan O'Barian. Co- Conan O'Barian. Well, they were going to call him Conan <laughs> O'Barian from now on. He, he doesn't know what kryptonite he's is. He's Irish. Going straight to Superman. <laughs> Superman would just spin him around and launch him into space. It's yeah, I'm not going to argue on this one. I certainly think Superman has the advantage uh, in, in All right, any Does anybody want to go... For Conan, Conan the Barbarian, Conan O'Barian. Ross the Rasta boss. Ross the boss is taking Superman. It's very lopsided. All, all, all Superman has to do is hit him once in the face, and he'll be knocked out and will probably dead. Um, but unless he has kryptonite, is there kryptonite involved at all with Superman? Can we get? Him, oh sure, time. now I mean, context it's, matters. It's, in my argument, context doesn't make well, a difference. Listen, no, so, I, t- I told you, you got to make the call on context. So, so it's not. I mean, I mean, Conan, Conan the Barbarian is some an Conan O'Brien. Is, Conan, Conan O'Brien Conan, has no chance. Conan against, O'Brien has actually, no chance. Conan O'Brien but, but has. Conan, Conan the O'Brien the has messed up how I pronounce Conan the Barbarian. Conan the Barbarian <laughs> does not Sorry, have Conan. any kryptonite. It's, it hasn't been discovered yet. He's fighting in the 15, 1600s. Is that right? Am I am I close at yeah. all? But so uh, that, that all seemed, being said, I think it might have been eight hundred actually. It's, I don't. It's, what does it matter? So Superman by knockout. Yeah, there's no right. way. I mean, Conan like he's not prepped for you know super breath yeah. coming at him or something. Is he like really that, Conan so now? It's too easy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Conan, Conan, Conan the Barbarian, <laughs> who went to Harvard. Yeah. Okay, right. listen, it's it, it's over. We're moving on to the uh, East bracket. The number one seed there is the Emperor, and he is facing Hannibal Lecter. Oh my God, that is some frightening stuff. Okay, um, Lauren, you did a, a Hannibal Lecter imitation um, last time. I want to see it again. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Some... Okay, good. So the Emperor is facing Hannibal. He does have some fava beans and a nice Chianti with him. There is context in this one. Casey, who you got? It's the Emperor all the way. I mean, I don't, I don't think the, the liver of the Emperor would taste that good anyway. That might turn Hannibal Lecter off. But, oh, yeah, uh, that's I mean, a good point. The guy's got lightning coming yeah. out of his fingers because of the dark side of the Force. So I just think it's going to be a quick – it'll be quicker, I think, even than Superman versus Conan the Oberian. All right, all right, Ross, who you got? Ross the boss. Uh, the, I mean, hands down, the emperor. He has powers. All, all hands Han- up, the emperor. Uh, yeah, I mean, Go ahead, the, em- keep going. the emperor has everything going going for him. <laughs> Hannibal Lecter, I, I love him as a as a serial killer, but he's not going to kill the emperor. I take but, the emperor in the knockout first round. You heard it from me first. Uh, I'm Ross the boss. I'm total, I'm to, I love how he said he heard it from him <laughs> first, from even though third. he didn't hear it from first. You heard, you heard it from round. me third. First round knockout. Yeah. Oh, in the first round. I see. First okay, but listen, yeah, I, I think the emperor is going to be like, you want this? And Hannibal Lecter will be like, I do not want this. This is the first time I have not wanted to eat someone. The emperor is going to win just by being disgusting. How yes. about you, Lauren? Hands down. Your vote I mean, doesn't even is- matter. No, yeah. And, and this New is York voting down. again. We can move on. Yeah, let's let's move on. Okay, we're moving on. All right. Now, here's a, a 116 that I think is is the most chance for an upset. Number one seed Sauron from the Lord of the Rings facing off against Mr. Miyagi who vanquished Hitler in the bunker. So, does anybody believe? You know, I'm going to start here because I don't I don't want to know what's going to happen. I think Mr. Miyagi can take down Sauron, and I'm going to make that call. And here's why. All you got to do is get rid of the ring. So 
A hobbit did it. We have proof <laughs> that Sauron can be brought down by Frodo. I mean, and this... he's not in here. Mr. Miyagi can do it. He will, he will say, karate, here, karate, here, karate, not here. No. I don't, <laughs> squash I don't know. Him like I don't even grape. know what to say. Um, He'll squash him like a grape, right? <laughs> All right. Um, did I convince I, anybody? I don't know. I mean, like, Sauron's like this all-knowing, crazy, evil guy. He's, just he's a, a giant eye. He, what power no, does he have? It's the, does he have the orcs it's like, and that's, fighting and with him? Thing, what? Does he have the orcs fighting with him in these battles? Because he's I don't just know an about eye of the you, you, get to de- you get to decide the context, but Hitler did not have the Nazis. I'll just, I'll just say that. Right. That's right. true. So Fair we're going to go without I'll just put that right there. here. But he, no, no, no. Like when he's the eye, my understanding of Lord of the Rings, it's, and it's not great. And I'm sure, you know, we have, we'll have people typing in being like, this is wrong, you know. But my <laughs> if, you, if you start to argue, like, we will be killed for our nerddom. <laughs> if you right, start to argue against Mr. Miyagi, I'll just cut you off. Go, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Who, who you got? You know, my understanding of Sauron is that, um, is it like I don't, he he's Im- he's immortal? Like he can he leaves his it. his body. It uh, he leaves yeah. its no, his body, and then when he's out of the body, he's like the eye. <laughs> he's he's the all knowing <laughs> evil eye. Man. Ross. Ross. Ross, Ross uh, tell okay. me, tell me, who do you have? I mean, Miyagi, you has, have? Miyagi has no superpowers. He's an old guy that teaches karate. Neither did Frodo. Uh, no, it's true. Miyagi, Miyagi can't do it. No. But Frodo had the no, fellowship. Because, All right, yeah, and, uh, Casey, did, did I win you rings, As long as the ring stays on his finger, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an easy win. Well, I, you, look, I'm the guy who voted for Arya and everybody laughed at me. I don't think Miyagi beating Sauron is, a, is, is much farther of a stretch than that. So you've convinced me. Yeah, uh, let's throw it to a tie. Now that uh, means we bring in Andrew Seifter to break the tie. Who's it going to be? Tie break. Oh, man, I, was, I would have loved to give the tiebreaker on one of the other ones instead of this. <laughs> I, I have to admit, I think I'm the guy that like doesn't like karate kid or lord of the rings as much as everybody else does so uh i oh, you know you're dq'd <laughs> I, I i think i will go with the i like the underdog story so i'll go with mr miyagi oh gosh. yes no way no well way. done a number one seed uh, has been knocked no way. out it's unbelievable Daniel man Sun? it's unbelievable you better call to you you better call to you <laughs> yes miyagi moves on okay guys we got to get to the eight nine seeds oh, uh, we, we first have in the west We've got a really tough one for Optimus Prime. He's phasing off against Magneto, and that oh, means Magneto it. won. I'm not even going to make an argument. He, he, well, you don't. You don't have to. He, he, Magneto he controls, controls metal. metal. It's over. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love Optimus Prime, but he, you know, he's metal. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we, are we all in agreement? Ross? Too easy. Rock, paper, scissors. Yes. Metal always wins. Okay. Yes. All right. We're good with that. All right. So now we're moving on to a big 8-9 one. This is a tough one. Okay. Uh, in the Midwest. Godzilla, the eight seed, faces Dumbledore, the nine seed. Ooh. This is really a, it's a weird mismatch. You've got a giant dinosaur against an old wizard. I, I'm just an very all confused pow- But he's an all-powerful old wizard, man. Mm. I don't think it's as close as people think it is. Dumbledore has spells for everything. He's got weapons that he can create with his wand. I just, I don't think Godzilla and his tiny arms stand much of a chance. That's true. And That's Dumbledore true. Ex- can... Expelliarmus. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and Dumbledore, uh, you know, he he busts out with invisibility. He's like this, like, wizard He's... of all wizards. He, he, knows... he, he could probably just shrink Godzilla. I mean, right. he probably it, could. You know, I think that it's Godzilla really is turn like... him into a teacup. Exactly. It's really yeah, a no transfiguration. Right. Oh, I, and I think Ross, it, Ross like... has something to say about it. Let's see oh, if we can turn this Ross around. is mad at us. I, I'm taking Godzilla hands down. He has the fire coming out of hands his breath. Up. He doesn't use his hands. <laughs> Little he hand. has the fire. He has the fire <laughs> and he steps on people. He crushes. He steps. Boom, boom, boom. And he, he like never dies. I mean, nuclear power makes this guy stronger and faster. Except in round one. He does die in round one because Dumbledore it seems to have him three to one. Are you guys officially on that? I'm going to say Dumbledore. Ah, oh, yeah. Godzilla. Godzilla. Absolutely. Magic Trump strength. Every time. Okay. All right. Uh, we're moving on. Mistake. Now we got another tough eight seed, eight, nine seed, and this relates to Harry Potter as well. We got the eight seed Wolverine. I mean, the guy with these claws, He's they, we're having him face off with a child. I feel really weird about this. Harry Potter, the nine seed, a child. We throw him in 
with Hugh Jackman. I don't know. This is this is this is frightening. Uh, I'm not gonna make the call first. I'm I'm, I'm I'll go first. I never go on first. On this. Yeah, this I knew you would, oh. Ross. <laughs> so I'm 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 taking Wolverine, Harry Potter. As much as he has powers and stuff, it always seems to take him a while to figure out like his what his powers are. It's it's never like it's he's never decide he's so dis, undecisive. I mean, I, I'm taking Wolverine. Wolverine is is faster. He's stronger. He's he's a more of a killer. He'll go out there and kill Harry Potter, take his throat, slash it, and then drink the yeah. blood out of it. Harry Potter will be dead, and Wolverine so you, wins. <laughs> Wolverine this time wins. you heard it here first. Wolverine that wins. Third, that's third true. Round, Kills children. And third drinks round their blood. knockout. Third Don't round forget knockout, about the drinking of the blood. And he'll take his glasses and put them on and laugh and walk away from his, <laughs> his dead scarf. body. Yeah. All right, Lauren. Take that. What, 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 oh, it's, what do you say about Wolverine. it, Lauren? It's Wolverine. I mean, it's 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 not even even close. You know, I was arguing I magic in the Dumbledore match, but Harry Potter is not the level of Dumbledore, and he's just like you know, he's he, he's he not. Does his I mean, spells, he, but he just took kind of him around with his friends, and uh, it, it took I, him I think seven books to beat Voldemort. Solo. Yeah, was it seven, books, seven books to beat which Voldemort, which was like there you go, four thousand. He's not gonna have time with it's Wolverine. It's unacceptable. Well, mm-hmm. uh, it's over. I'm calling it. Okay, and yeah. the last one. Uh, the number eight seed He-Man against the number nine seed Phoenix. Now she um, went very Ooh, far in the X-Men, X-Men tournament. Yeah, yeah, and um, and He-Man. Um, when we did our dry run of this, he really surprised me how far people thought he would go. I'm not going to say more about that because you're going to see it unfold. But He-Man versus Phoenix. For me, I've got Phoenix all the way. She is a super powerful. Yeah, she was character. class five X. She was a class five mutant in the X Men series. Like she could do it all. It'd be tough for He Man to beat her. The, well, one way he could though is that his bowl cut could make her laugh and distract right. her. Right, throw I'm her off say. her game. Yeah, and now, he has Grayskull. Ross, what do you think about? Uh, uh, that's true. Power of Grayskull. I, I, Ross, I'm, what do you say about, I, I, about his? I'm him taking and his bowl Phoenix cut. all the way. It's it's night and day. It's Phoenix knockout fifth round. Um, <clears throat> I just do too many too many positives for Phoenix. As much yeah, as I right. like, so, He Man doesn't have the power of Grayskull this time. No. Points for his haircut, but he doesn't have the power. <laughs> so three three nine seeds advance and one sixteen seed. This was extremely yes. exciting. This was good. And uh, you know, next next time we're gonna see some more heroes and villains fall. I love the spirited arguments. Well done, guys. Bowl cuts are just not in. Um, sorry, sorry, He Man. Um, Up next, Ross and I have the pleasure of talking fantasy sports, football careers, and life after the game with former defensive lineman Chuki Wakori. Ross the Boss and I are sitting here with Chuki Wakori. He played in the actual NFL. We cannot believe it. That's something Ross and I definitely never did. Well, maybe you did. Ross, did you? Ross the Boss has never played in the NFL, but he could have if he wanted to. He doesn't want to pursue that in his career. But, but we're happy to have our guest on today. I'm very excited. Um, yeah, Chuki, thank you for joining us. No, Chuki, thanks for having me. Chuki, thank you. Um, first thing I want to ask you, out of the gate, you played at Green Bay. How cold was it on that field in Lambeau? You're from Nigeria. You lived there for eight years. I mean, have you ever seen snow until you went to Green Bay? I mean, how, how bad was that weather? Tell us. Uh, it was cold. It was cold. It was cold. You know, you know it's cold when everything you wear was battery operated, <laughs> battery operated socks, <laughs> battery operated pants. They they <clears throat> sold those things. They sold those things. So yes, it was very cold. Did you ever accident? Did you ever accidentally like hit Brett Favre in practice? Did you ever like? Uh, no, that would never happen. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you this. I'll tell you this. My 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 D line coach Jethro Franklin. One of the first thing he does in training camp is he puts on he puts Brett Favre's all of Brett Favre's accolades on the board, right? And he tells you if you beat your guy and get close to him, don't even don't even breathe the same air he's breathing, because if you touch him, he draws a bus. <laughs> Someone's gonna go pack your stuff, put it on the bus, and they have you leaving. Green Bay. So you End can't. That, that was, yep. You touch him, you're done. 
<laughs> so I bet I bet it's true. I bet if you touched him, you you not only be done with the team, you probably wouldn't be invited anywhere. People would be like, no. "Stay away from my quarterback." Right, right. If, you, if you'd you, hit Brett you Favre, touch him. And, yep. and you had you had one of the most iconic runs for a defensive lineman I've ever seen. You you were playing, and I think you were playing for the Colts. And right. there was a fumble. You ran and eighty yards against the Jets. Vinny Testaverde tried no, to tackle 90, you. Ninety-eight. Ninety-five. 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 And it was. Yeah. It was. I mean, we'll we'll show it right now. Actually. Stars on the gridiron. Shuki Bukori. Let's get it. Go. Let's 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 go.
with another team doing right. training camp. Right. That is just to get that little bit of practice going against a different opponent as opposed to the same person every day. And, and they right. didn't get to do that this year. They didn't year. do that this year. No, I watched I watched right. Hard Knocks. Um, I don't know if you watched it this year. They did the Rams and they did the Chargers. And mm -hmm. they didn't get to practice against other teams. They practiced against each other. Each and other. You could, and you could tell, I mean, pre, I felt the preseason game was last week. I mean, I, I mean, I had no idea who was going to start, who's going to play, who's going to be a star right. on the team. I mean, and I, what I feel what's happening in football is that it's going to be more the, the quarterbacks are more mobile and they run more. And right. it's a whole different game now compared to what it was when you played. I mean, right. you, you know, you had you know, you had the Marinos, you, you know, you had the guys, you know, you, you had, had you know, you, you, you had, had the, Michael Vick. We well, had wait, Vick. yeah, you had Dan Michael Marino. Vick, but Dan I'm, Marino I'm, was long retired. I know. I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, Marino was the standard pocket quarterback that didn't leave right. the pocket. Exactly. Yeah. And, you ba and you we, basically and, just said Chucky is 65. Well, I, I, I can say 55. <laughs> but I mean, but but basically, what I'm saying is, I mean, have you seen the change? I mean, the, these these Lamar Jacksons, these Pat Mahomes, these Russell Wilsons. These guys can run. Even Josh Allen from Buffalo. I mean, no. I mean, I mean, no, do you I see agree. the difference? I agree. No, I agree with that. I mean, I, what I, would that be? What would that be like as a de, as a defensive lineman trying to deal with that? I mean, was was there anybody if, like that back then? If, like I'm saying, that was uh, that was. Um, oh, I guess Vic was there. Yeah, Michael Vic was there. But here's my thing: with a, I can, my, what I can see happening back from if I was if I was to be playing today. If outside of defense back then is playing today, I see a lot of spy, a lot of sitting home, mm -hmm. not rushing up the field. I see a lot of because we did a little bit of that where the DN will get up, flex out a little bit, jam the tight end or the minus receiver, right. then rush in late type deal. So that's what I see happening. But uh, these these players nowadays, there's too much speed out there. Oh, Kyrie, not, Kyrie, I mean, not, all these not, guys, Kyrie Murray. I mean, I don't know how you guard I mean, that guy. So before we let you go, I want to hear your prediction. Who's who's going to be playing in the Super Bowl and who's the winner? Go. <laughs> you watch football. I know you man, I know you study it. I know, but no, but here's the thing, though. I can't. I don't. Man, that's that's tough. I want to see Baltimore in the Super Bowl. How about that? That's who I picked. I picked Baltimore. That's, I would like I, to see Baltimore in the Super Bowl. I agree. I'm out. As far as who is going to be out there with them, I don't know. To see, I could sit here yeah. and tell you, oh, the, the Rams could have been there, but look how that turned out. <laughs> the, the, the NFC is harder to predict, but I think the Ravens is a great yeah. pick. And as a Browns fan, it hurts, but I, hey, Browns fans, is all, it always hurts. It hurts every year. Right. What do you, um, it's what do you think about oh. the Browns, Chuki? Man, there's a team that's always got really. talent. They got a talent. They got a lot of talent. Lots they do. of talent. If they got Chubb. You know what? They got Odell heard, Beckham Jr. They have not, exactly. They have they got some weapons. They got, they got weapons, weapons, but let me tell you one thing: Baker Mayfield is one game away from being benched. I'm saying that now. I mean, he has to step it up. You know, I'm right, Tuki. Mm -hmm. You know that I'm right. He has to show some spirit. He has to be. He has to win some games. I mean, he does more so, commercials than he has so, wins. So, so here's a, here's a, here's my here's my prediction. I think tonight Baker Mayfield is going to get it done. I think tonight. He has to. Oh, I, I, I'd love, but, I'd love but, to see it. But I would like to. I want to step back a little bit and talk about all the teams. How did all the coaches make their cuts this year without having <laughs> seen yeah, the guys seriously. play against somebody else? I'm curious because I'm sure there's a lot of good free agents out there. Well, what they did was that they did expand the practice squad. They get expanded. They expanded that a lot. Uh, the the oh, practice okay. squad. They did expand it, but okay. I felt bad. They had players like the first week it was like non-touch drills. They called up to the right. office and they said you're being cut. And I felt bad because these guys trained the whole summer, the whole, the whole summer, winter right. to to for this chance, and they're right. being cut after the first week of. I mean, they were doing drills that I could do. I mean, they, they were like half-speed drills that I, I could do these drills. I could have been one of yeah. the guys that was cut. But what I'm saying right. is this. I felt horrible for those guys. And hopefully some of the guys got picked up. But they did expand the practice squad. I, I was happy about that. I, I Watching Hard Knocks, you get to know 
all the ins and outs, really, which Ross the Boss mm-hmm. loves to know that stuff, as you know. Um, but Tuki, thanks for talking with us. Um, well, uh, I, I don't agree with your Browns pick. I'm picking the Bengals, but we'll see what happens. He he learned right. his lesson. He he picked he picked the Ra- the Ravens to lose to the Browns last week. But Chuki, you should stick around because we're gonna have Ross do those drills next. Okay, cool. Tuki, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining okay. us. No problem. Thanks for having me. That was a great show. Chuki, great job. We were all excited about it. Make sure you tune in next week. We have some great stuff going on. We have week three predictions. We'll talk about week two, who failed, who was great. And we'll also do our brackets with our villains. It's going to be great. I'm Ross the Boss. And make sure you subscribe to our show, The Hub. I'll see you next week. Cowboy. My wife, she found me in-